you're ready. Looks like you're ready. What's up, Kurt? You're the only one in the chat right now. And the first in the chat right now. Just making sure everything is good here. I'm pushing the wrong buttons. Are we in? Did we do it? Is it working? I hope so. First in the chat. So, you want to watch some breaks fix. Put a K in the chat for Kurt. This headset's too tight. Maybe not. I thought I could feel some resistance. That was weird. Put a K in the chat for Kurt. It's Kurt Rao. Anyways. <laughs> I'm going to fix the brakes on this bike. You guys saw the video yesterday, and if you didn't see the video yesterday, you should watch it, where I put the front brakes on it. And uh, I talked a little bit about how the, uh, the front brakes are great. I see the problem. It's a Sunday. Mr. Bought a Sunday recently. Uh, front brakes are great. They're dialed. They work really well. I'm still going to put some tri-flow in the cable just because it'll make them better but my rear brakes they pull decent but man they're spongy and i can see part of what's making them spongy right now so we're gonna fix it first off where do we start try flow in the cables to make them run smoother i should replace all of the housings and everything but with the circumstances of this weekend I wanted to get this bike done what kind of cable ho and housing you got going honestly these are just like random cable inners that you'd like buy you, you, a bike shop would get Jaguar I think is the brand to replace and then the cables the housings themselves are Odyssey like random like the cheap ones not the good ones that Odyssey makes. I never wiped off that front hub when I was cleaning it. Oops, need to do that. What up, Russell Jennings? So, I guess first, I'm gonna disconnect these so that I can drop some tri flow into them. That. We're gonna flip the bike. Like this. Come on. And can we see this? Just, do you guys use a liner housing on the front? I don't know. I'll be totally honest. I got a crazy deal on these forks from somebody like years and years ago. I just. I forget how I found them, but somebody wanted to trade forks. So I got lucky and traded a set of kink CST forks straight up for these forks, the brakes on them and the lever. And they haven't, nothing's been changed on them since. Pretty lucky. I can never make them work when I do that. Oh, linear is what he meant. Yeah, it's not a linear cable housing. I don't know. They work really well, though, so I just haven't bothered changing anything. Because I feel like if I change something, they're not going to work as good. And I haven't even put tri-flow in the housing or anything yet. So I'm kind of just like going along with it till something happens. So first off, I'm putting tri-flow into these housings because... They are just, to put it lightly, they're used, <laughs> abused, probably full of dirt and dust. And I'm guaranteeing it's part of why my brakes feel like garbage, but also 
the amount of excess that I have down here. I found out real quick on my new bike that the less excess you have at this part of the cable with my system, the more solid the brakes feel. What do we got in the chat? What's up, Jeff Mead? Actually, I don't know why I haven't moved this closer yet. I would like to hear what Jeff does for his front brake setup. Jeff! Actually, I probably can't. Jeff, are you off work? Call me if you're off work, Jeff. You can tell the chat what you do with your front brakes. Oh, if he does that, it's going to try. No, it won't go through my phone will, or my computer, will it? We don't want that there. Okay. So I put a bunch of TriFlow in there. I'm going to just do one of these numbers. Yeah, there's like no resistance there, though. feels really smooth that side's pretty good as well this heater is going to be deaf me because it's annoying as hell this side there's a little bit more friction going on oh i see the only thing i don't like about v-brake noodles is the fact that that plastic thing on them it's freaking stuck. Driving. Okay, Jeff's driving. He's busy. Alright. I guess I can just pull this out of here and just go like that. Pretty smooth in there, honestly. So I think that's probably enough tri flow on that part. Now, flip the bike back up, right? The beauty of the park tool stand. Now I'm gonna put some into the v-brake noodles see i don't like how the v-brake noodles have this plastic thing in them that just comes out super easily it's kind of annoying and it's always an issue i guess i could take it out but like it feels like if i took it out that it would make the brakes worse also i had a video go live at 3 30 just in case anybody didn't see figured I would go live at the same time because why the hell not right all right a couple drops of tri-flow in the in the v-brake noodle Good enough. Other side. Same freaking problem, man. Kind of ready to just rip that plastic out of there. You need it to reduce friction, right? I mean, I'm assuming that's what it's for. It's just in there already when you get the V-brake noodle. So, like, I don't take it out. I guess you wouldn't want metal on metal with the plastic and the cable or the V-brake noodle in the cable. Have you ever thought about running both brakes from one lever? Funny story about that. I actually got all of the stuff to do that like honestly a year or two 
more than a year or two ago, like a long time ago from Brimstone. And then I just slept on it and never did it. And then Scotty and those guys did it on Scotty's YouTube channel. And I was just like, well, they did it. I don't have to anymore. Super smooth. And I didn't even do anything to the top cables yet. Okay. Now we got to put it upside down. How's the stream? Is quality all right? More of the beauty. Oh my God, it gets heavier upside down. Why am I stuck? What's going on here? Ugh. Okay. Are we in here? Not quite. No con cable housing is the only away. What's the only away? Everything's all right, thanks Herb. Bikes and russets. What's a russet? Uh, let's see. Shout out to the 18 people in the chat now. Hope everybody's having a good day. We're fixing the brakes on the front brake bike. Making them dialed. They were fine, but I'm making them even more fine by adding tri-flow into the housing on the upper and the lower cables, trying to make things dialed. Okay, that's probably good for that side. Guess what, gyro. Is the no con cable still being made? Jeff, I would be down to have you hop on. It's just, I can't do a uh, Skype and a stream from where I'm at. Cause out in the garage, it's not as good of internet, but uh, that would be cool sometime. The no con cable I don't is not being made, but there's like a knockoff version of it. I guess you can buy from China. That's what Keith out at Woodward has. He said it's like some knockoff thing from China that you can buy. So if you search for it, I'm sure you can find it. All right, tri-flow in the housings. That looks like an accident waiting to happen, having the bike like that. I should have put the thumbnail like this, just like. <laughs> but it works, because guess what? Park tool's legit. That's the front brake lever. Oh yeah, they are super smooth now. Now all it's going to be is adjusting this part and they will be dialed. I'm excited because I was not stoked about how the brakes felt whenever I put all this together. Let's fix the accident waiting to happen. Accident waiting to happen. I guess I could turn this a little bit though. Maybe. And go down. Mosh about there. So now I reconnect. Let's 
see what they feel like. Yeah, the brake pads now are just awful where they're at. I'm gonna have to go off frame for a second because I'm gonna clean the brake pad off with a stone wheel thing. Just so we can have the absolute best brakes possible. This is exactly what I did to dial in my brakes on the other bike. Is that just tri-flow chain lube you used? Uh, it's just normal tri-flow. Superior lubricant. Normal tri-flow. What up, Taco Slurpees? Damn, I need to fix my brakes too. Yeah, it's definitely something that your, your bike will not feel as good as it could if you have brakes and they don't work very well. folks give me a, a minute here i'm gonna go and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a wire not wire wheel but a stone wheel and i'm gonna file these or grind these so that they're smooth miss running a no con after getting a bike stolen with it i never felt like dishing out 50 dollars for a new one that's understandable but what i hear you can buy knockoff china ones which are like the same thing Lubricate the cables with grease instead of oil. I think this way lubri the lubrication lasts longer. I mean, it makes sense. I'm going to go file these super quick. I'll be right back. You'll be able to hear it, I think. So this, that was super easy to do. I might rotate them because I honestly don't remember which was which. I don't know if it matters. Put that that way. The wheel is spinning this way. Rotate them like this. Okay, we're good. I hope anyways. Oh, come on. I got two left hands right now. Next, I may loosen the cables up again too to tighten these down. It would definitely work better that way. This is a very important part of your brakes feeling dialed. If your pads aren't the way you want them to be, then your brakes aren't gonna feel the way you want them to feel. Come on. Jeez. 
That was annoying. Front brake, gang. Yep, yep. Rings are mega tight too though. That's gonna feel like garbage. something up here I will change something up here so I didn't have the uh, okay I'm gonna explain what's going on JDA what's up shout out to the members in the chat who's directly support this YouTube channel I appreciate you guys uh, so what I didn't have way I had this set up was like this and then I had the pad here with the brake arm between it, the spacers that allow you to adjust the angle easier were not on either side of the brake arm. If you can see what I'm talking about, they were not like this. They were all on one side, making it so that I couldn't adjust the angle of the pad as easily. And I did this because I was running that 2.4 alienation tire and I just had no options I had to have the brakes as far in as I could possibly get them but that's not the case anymore I can I have a 2.25 tire now so I can put those spacers back on the inside and adjust my pads exactly how I need to which is going to make things a whole heck of a lot easier for me. And it might even honestly make it easier for me uh, adjusting the cables right now too. We'll see. I think that might be good. Oh yeah. That may not make it easier. It's definitely super far away now. But I have to adjust that part anyways. Can't wait to get my front brakes out. I bet. Shoot, I can't wait to get these out. I mean, it sounds good. Can you hear it? Sounds a lot better to me. And it's going to sit right there so there's no rubbing issues on the tire. Sweet. I'm excited to film the next episode in this series tomorrow because some important stuff is going on the bike. And this week, something very important is showing up for the bike. That will be its own episode and definitely not part of the one that I do tomorrow. But we're getting there. I'm getting this bike done so that I can ride it this weekend because Carl Hinckley's going to be at Ray's. And you know who else is going to be at Ray's? He's in the chat and it's not Kurt Rowell. It's Jeff freaking Mead, baby.
Wow, that is like... Could not be any more perfect right off the rip. Holy cow. That was crazy. How did I even do that? Wheat. Oh, that's rubbing on the tire because they're not tight in there yet. What's up, Kevin Jackson? About to work on my brakes more. Let me know if that heater gets annoying. All right, so at this point, everything's dialed in. I'm going to adjust these lower cables out as much as they need to be and evenly. I don't love that the gyro isn't even. But we'll get over it. What up, Stony OFG BMX? Stony, when's your next video coming out? If you guys don't follow Stony, you should. Okay, so we need more cable. Get back. Just like that. Do you put toe in on your pads? No, I don't toe them in at all. I make them perfectly parallel to the rim because I cannot stand when the pad hits the rim. So if this is the rim, and this is the brake pad. I can't stand if it hits like this and then pulls to where it hits and then the top hits. I hate that feeling. I hate it so much. So I do not tow in the pad at all. quite enough though. Hopefully sooner than later. I hope so too. I need an indoor park. What about 50-50 BMX? For BMX bikes, you get more power with the pads hitting the rim flat. That's interesting. I wasn't aware that that was like a actual scientific thing. I need more slack out of here. I need more slack in there, I guess, rather. There we go. That might actually be too much. <laughs> I 
I'm just going to run it. They're not open. Oh, that sucks. Towing is for the sport comforts and hybrids to reduce squeal. It's Kevin Jackson's birthday. Well, happy birthday, Kevin. I hope you're talking about Kevin Jackson. Tightening this side up. Because of COVID, and they're looking for a bigger place. Man, that'd be awesome if 50 50 found a bigger spot. Actually, don't think I can get that one off. Actually, I probably could if I had to. Gross, though. Whoa. I don't know what that's all about. We'll see. Friday, gotcha. Nice. Well, happy birthday on Friday. That side's done. This side needs loosened now. Hey, brand Flatland. I know that you can be. No, I can't peg manual actually. I would love to learn how to do a turbine. I have no idea where to start. Probably the peg manual, I guess. But I can't peg manual. Cody can. Cody's good at him. Should have done earlier. Oh well. We'll run it. Yo, what up, Huck Karinsky? Shout out and thank you for the super chat. I have to make it so this side can come off. At least one of them comes off now. Building a manual machine. That would be cool. Oh, 
my goodness. <laughs> okay, hold on. We got to tighten this up first before I start geeking out at how good they feel. That would be the quickest brake dialing ever. Probably because I figured out how to do it with my new bike in like a scientific way that I approached it. Yeah. If anyone ever wants awesome brakes to really lock up and don't squeal, OG Evos with Cool Stop Salmon Eagle 2 pads with a tip sanded off and a chrome rim. Boom. There you go. Just watched the three-team game of bike. GG. Did we win? I can't remember. <laughs> that was filmed in November, and I can't remember anything. Come on. Get on there. There we go. Oh my goodness. They're so good. That's what I needed right there. One side's a little further away. This side. Honestly though, can I get this off if I had to? I mean, if I really had to, I could take the bolt out, I guess. can't twist it off like I can the other side. So I think I need to loosen this side up a little tiny bit. Just so that it's adjustable and things can come off if they need to. If someone wants to see something super crazy, look up Adam Kuhn Monster Whip. He did a Flatland combo with a dark side tail whip in it and kept going. That sounds crazy. I don't know what that means, like even slightly, but it sounds cool. Okay, got that side to the point where it would come off. Tighten it back up. And we're so far out or in on adjustment that I'm okay with having to use the barrel adjusters a little bit here because the barrel adjusters aren't even doing anything right now. They're all the way in. When's the next Lip Lords video coming out? As soon as I edit it, Jeff, I need a song. And I want Lip Lords Part 3 vibes. So if you can find a song that'll give Lip Lords Part 3 vibes, hook me up, because I need it. So I need to go in a little bit on the barrel adjusters, or out a little bit rather. just seen the thumbnail alone and that's nuts interesting a dark side tail up is basically doing a rocket manual while your bike is upside down 
in that position you do a hop tail whip and land back in the dark side rocket man that sounds insane can pull them tightly and they feel good oh yes that is what I'm talking about Whew. whenever this heater turns off you're gonna be able to hear that it's good to get tri-flow into the upper brake cable or the front brake cable if you guys could do me a favor though after this live streams over go and watch search on Google lip Lords part 3 watch lip Lords part 3 on YouTube it's on my channel and then comment some songs that you think would give the next Lip Lords the same vibe. That's what I need. I want the Lip Lords, or I want the Lip Lords Part 3 vibe in the next video. And the only way to get that is with a song that fits just like that one did. All right, drop some tri flow into this. See if we can't get these fronties working as smoothly as the backies. And then with my changes to this bike tomorrow, riding it this weekend. Oh. Brant is one of the only people I can imagine doing a magic carpet grind. I've heard that name, but I don't know what it means. I've heard Sponge say that name before. But I don't know what a magic carpet grind is. After this stream, if you could watch Pull Back or Die, that would be great. <laughs> That's funny. Like, I'm going to be totally honest. It's not that I don't want to watch that video. I know it's amazing. I've heard how amazing that video is. And I've heard people talk about the parts in it and everything. I just, for some reason, man, when it comes to full length videos, my brain shuts off. It's like, I just want to go make and film videos. It's weird. I'm going to do a, a live stream here soon reacting to the first ever full length video that I made it's a it was a video called L true love and I made it in 2009 and it's 36 minutes long oh my goodness tri flow is amazing Dude, these brakes feel better than they ever have before. Probably because I've never put tri-flow in the cable ever. All I've ever done is adjust the brake spring tension to try and make them pull at the same time. Wow, I'm so stoked. Magic carpet grind, oops, is where you pedal grind where you're Oh, okay. Well, I watched Vans Live Fast because they played it at Swamp Fest. <laughs> That's why I watched that. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to say what I was about to say because it gives something away that doesn't need to be given away yet. But dude, these brakes, oh, they're so good. 
take away a tiny bit more of the oh yeah oh yeah dude i think i'm gonna try and take away slack or put the barrel adjuster in yo kyle mcdonald what currency is that kyle is that euro kyle mcdonald thank you and like i don't want anyone to think that i'm like insulting vans live fast or any of the people in it or any of the people in pull back or die it's just for some reason that is how my brain works when it comes to full length videos yes jeff all the lip lords videos are in a playlist on the channel kyle thank you for that seriously i really appreciate it I like how it comes out to, uh, it shows me the trans, or the conversion to uh, American dollars on that. It's uh, 1143, 1043, 1143. Thank you, thank you, seriously. Odyssey needs to bring back the director forks in elementary STEM. That's funny. Uh, Michael, if you're still in here, these are Odyssey F25 forks. I told the story earlier, but there was only a couple people in here. I got super lucky on these like years ago where I traded. Somebody wanted to trade their forks straight up. So I traded a set of kink CST forks they came on a bike that I bought from somebody. Straight up trade for these forks, the brakes that came on them, the lever, and the cable all set up. And they got put to use very well. I'm stoked. These brakes feel fan friggin' tastic. I should probably true my wheel. Because certain things are definitely not going to happen by. Friday um, and then I got another video I may film two more videos jeez this headset seems extra tight should I fix that I just switched out my Odyssey raft stem for a cinema projector stem and I'm in complete love with the feel of it it's a shorter stem so that shortness of the stem in the reach gives it a totally different feel than if your raft stem has a longer reach. Shorter reach is totally different, especially if you do bar spins. If you do bar spins, a shorter reach is going to make a huge difference. Can I? I just want to loosen it. Just a little. Hopefully this is still lined up. Let's see. Yeah, it's still good. Uh, sounds like you were going for some pop slash hip hop with a bit of happy slash pushing vibe for your Lip Lords videos. Yes, they've always been poppy and fun. The first one I ever made, I used the song Pain for Pleasure by Sum 41. Then uh, part two was an AAFI song, which was super like it's poppy and nice for the video. Oh yeah, gyro spins, good enough. I could probably get it to spin better if I took out this uh but the third one 48 millimeter stems for the win yes the third lip lords video that i ever made we used the uh flow Rida song called right round with kesha in it and 
man, there's just something about that Lip Lords, which is like the pinnacle of the entire series for me. I love that part. It is definitely near the top of my list, if not the top. It's too far. Buzz. Okay. Forty-eight millimeter stems for the win. Gyro spins flat. I think this is off. Man, there's some kind of. I think it's I think it's the rim being untrue Brent check out black leave the comments on the uh, video so they're all in the same place if you guys remember please there we go that's what needed to happen or send it in a message on Instagram just somewhere where I can easily see it Oh, I'm stoked. I get to ride with Carl and Jeff. Now I'm going to make these brakes work extra good. With some of my magic, magic stuff here. Stoked. I've heard TV killed the radio star. I'm still waiting on somebody to remake that song and call it uh, video or uh, web videos killed the video part. And then after that, make Instagram killed the web video part. That was an hour? Holy cow. Yeah, this rim's untrue. God, these brakes feel good. I am stoked. Uh, should we true the rim? I've got my got my spoke wrench. You probably mentioned it in a previous video, but are your cranks and sprocket bolt drive or spline drive ordered a spline drive sprocket yesterday sick of tight spots in my sprocket so here's the deal about spline drive sprockets you're still going to end up with tight spots i thought the same thing and i went down the same route and i still had tight spots in my sprocket because it's just the nature of the beast, I guess, in BMX. Um, I had used spline drive for the longest time when I had the, uh, the, the bright blue frame on that is Victoria's bike now. It was spline drive, or it is spline drive right now. And I would still get tight spots. And then ever since I got the uh, Thunderbolt cranks, I've just ran bolt drive like the the RNC cranks I ride now are uh, bolt drive as well I I've never found a way to get rid of all of the tight spots it'll it'll be surely it will be improved I mean it's gonna be better when it's brand new but the second that you tweak it a little bit if you ever hit your sprocket is you're gonna get a tight spot again it's something that's 
really, really difficult to get around. This is tough right now. I can't see. Jeez. Freaking half this rim is to the side. That's okay. I will fix it. Breck Stoney, send it to me in a message so I know it and remember later because this chat goes away. And I will not remember. It doesn't go away, but I'm not going to remember to come back here and check it. I know I won't. Thanks for the info. I run my sprocket on the opposite side of grind, so hopefully it'll be worth it. Last while before developing a new tight spot. Yeah, I mean, it'll be fine for a while. I'm just like also extremely tough on my bike. And I land on the sprocket all the time and just I've never been able to get away from it. Uh, Dennis asking about the tie cranks holding up. They're good. They are. I mean, I have no complaints or no issues. Ever since all the issues that I talked about in my review were solved, I've had no problems. Oh, I need to use my truing stand, but actually, that's pretty dang close. Yeah, the tie cranks, solid. I don't have any complaints or issues anymore right here man the whole thing that's the one that I didn't tighten when I was at this side I mean, we're at the point where it's just micro hops Look so crazy in there. That is good enough. Guessing twenty eight nine correct. Have you ran four pegs before? No, not really. Thanks, Tony. What's the gearing on this? Yeah, it's t actually no, I'm lying. This one's 29 because it's that that one sprocket from that one company that I'm not going to promote because I heard a lot of my friends had bought this sprocket in the past and never got it. And I've had to talk to them personally about several people who never got their sprocket. Okay, so what do we do now? We let this side out. It's crazy how precise this is. We pull this side in. I may go in even further though myself a little more pull
been out of adjustment. That we also run on your new bike. No, the new bike is 28.9, normal. Um, have you ever ridden chain, chain tension? The frame has them built in. I don't use them, but they're there. I did a long, long, long time ago. I did run chain tensioners though on my bike, like actual chain tensioners that you'd buy very long time ago uh oh my stream cut out what happened are we back I think we're back come on YouTube come on OBS get it together Um, I'm not sure if this stream is working or not, but my brakes are absolutely dialed at this point. I'm nitpicking with it. I chewed my rim. I've pretty much done everything that I need to do to make them work extremely well. So I think I'm going to wrap this stream up because my internet's being all choppy and I'm hungry. So I want to go have some dinner. But I'm excited for this. I'm back. Well, I'm still going to wrap it up just because I'm going to go inside, and work on some videos, eat some dinner and stuff. And uh, I'm filming another one in this series tomorrow before I get to ride with Carl and Jeff this weekend. So I think that's it. 20A is definitely the way to go for sure. But I think we're good. My brakes are good again. I feel confident in riding this bike at Ray's this weekend if I feel like it. And I'm going to do some more changes tomorrow to make it even more suited to ride Ray's this weekend. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you uh, for the Super Chats, Huck Kerensky, and uh, it was, I'm not going to say this wrong, Kyle McDonald. Really appreciate that. I appreciate everybody for tuning in and watching. Stay tuned for next Tuesday, probably, for the next video in this series. Um, I'm probably going to post them out of order because there's something else that's going to be here this week that I want to post about first. So they'll be out of order just a little bit, but I will. they'll be in order in terms of how you guys see them because... I'll talk about it as if it's in order. That being said, Lip Lords Part 3. Go watch it and tell me some songs that could go in the newest Lip Lords that will give it a similar vibe to that one. I want to recreate, not recreate, but give us the Lip Lords Part 3 vibe again. So thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow for another video as you OBS cuts out on me again. It's time to go. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.